your last chance, Demon. If you're here, tell us your name. And again, you know the deal. I guess. It yeah! 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 Hello. Oh. Oh, man. I'm here. Yeah, I'm scared of you. I'm not good at it. I'm not afraid to admit it. Hello people, and welcome to Daily Dope. I hope you would have liked the trailer, but that's just the beginning of this video. In this video, I'll be sharing with you almost everything about the BuzzFeed Unsolved series. I've collected some really unnoticed and unknown facts and figures about the show, and I'll include them along with some interesting clips from the original series, to take you on a journey where we will be visiting the past, the present, and the possible future of the show, all at one place, with the help of this short documentary. If you are a true follower of the Ghoul Boys from the beginning, then you're surely gonna love this video. So without any further delay, let's get started. For the people who don't know much about Unsolved, let us put a very short overview about the show. It is a series of mostly 15 to 25 minutes long videos, revolving around two contrasting minds, Ryan Bergara, who believes in ghosts and demons, and can be seen terrified in many episodes. Oh, ah, oh God, what are you cut? Hey man! <laughs> And second, Shane Maddich, who keeps a skeptic belief on almost every mysterious happenings. Shane, nice to meet you. I think this is all bullshit. Demon? Stop calling you that. Demon! I don't think they have the power to turn it back on again, frankly. I really think they don't. I think this demon's a wimp. He's lost his mind. <laughs> Rock and roll, buckaroo! I don't feel particularly strange. It's not a great chair. Mop guys, thought you were tough guys. Thought you were big tough guys with your guns. The format of the show can be best divided into two parts. The first being true crime, where the duo sit down in studio, and take a look at several unsolved crime cases, where Ryan put up various theories that could be possible explanations to the crime, while Shane comments on it, mostly opposing it, in a humorous manner. The second part is called Supernatural, where they usually travel to different haunted locations, investigating about the mysteries of the paranormal. They usually deal with ghosts in this part, but also perform one demon investigation in every season. Later on, they developed a series called Postmortem, where they answer their fan-made questions about previous theories and investigations. This also consists the Silly Hot Dogga series, which Shane and Ryan made together. With that said, let's head to the very beginning of the Unsolved series. Ryan Bergara is the original creator of the show, with Brent Bennett as his first co-host. Yes, Shane was not the first co-host of Unsolved, as you can see in the very first episode. <laughs> oh! <laughs> All right, let's fix the camera. So today we're driving to the Stay On Main Hotel, or as it was formerly known, the Cecil Hotel, uh, as part of an ongoing series where I tell this guy true crime stories. And today, we- In 2016, Bennett was replaced by Shane Maddage, whose contrasting nature with Ryan Bergara made the series an immediate hit for BuzzFeed. Talking about the very beginning, Ryan and Shane had an almost identical history. They both went to film schools, did different jobs when in college, and later did internships at BuzzFeed, where they first crossed paths. One day, while Ryan was making other BuzzFeed videos, the idea for Unsolved suddenly popped on his mind. He then went on to make a four and a half minute long video, followed by a five minute video, and eventually made a seven minute long video, which immediately blasted off. The video became viral. And this was the time when BuzzFeed officially recognized the idea behind Unsolved, and told Ryan that this is what he should be doing from now. And the rest, is history. The show went on to become super hit, which later forced BuzzFeed to make a separate channel, which currently have a 4.2 million subscriber base, with a whopping 1.3 billion total video views, and over 9 billion minutes in watch time, which is almost 17,000 years in total. Isn't that amazing? 
Shane and Ryan both loved horror movies from their childhood, and surprisingly, both were skeptics at the beginning. Yes, you heard that right, Ryan was too a skeptic at first. But it was an experience in the rooms of the ship called RMS Queen Mary, which turned a 17-year-old Ryan Bergara into a true believer. This was the footage that he recorded. Getting chills seeing the actual toothbrush that has been so <laughs> Okay, see, look at it, you can see it. It already happened? Yeah, it already happened. Not boating well, considering I didn't even catch it. You were it. focusing on the wrong side of the screen. Yeah, there. there's definitely a force at play there, though. And what is that? Gravity. Let's play that again. See it again. Okay, you gotta admit, that looks weird. No? Right, so it really doesn't. Let's rewind it again. It happens at the exact same time that you throw your shit on the counter. There's always something. Look yeah. at the bag, how it moves. It's like... Yeah, because there's toothpaste on it. There's like a jitter. Watch. Bags are stiff. That's a pretty firm movement. It almost looks like someone's puppeteering it with a string. Right, it's a haunted bag. <laughs> you can't see that it flung it a little bit. This toothpaste falls straight down. It was up and down. Straight down. Up and down. Straight down. <laughs> no, up and down. While Shane remained a skeptic, with his skepticism increasing after every season, Ryan, on the other hand, had collected some really unnerving evidences while investigating. According to Shane, there's only one way to make him believe in ghosts, and this is it. Okay, that's it. I'll believe in ghosts if, on the EVP, we pick up choo-choo pickle pie. From today, if any one of you ever hear a ghost saying choo-choo pickle pie, send it directly to Shane. That would be a victory for Ryan. With that said, I think I've told you much about the beginning of Unsolved. Let's move on to the next section. In this section, let's try to be more familiar with the characters of the show. Note that we will not dive deeper in their personal lives, respecting their online privacies. First, let's start with Ryan Bergara. Ryan is the creator of Unsolved, and also the one who voiceovers the show. He leads the believer side, and viewers who support his side are often called the Booger Ross. A noticeable fact that you all will hear in many episodes, is that his father was a dentist, and he believes that his father had chopped someone's head off by mistake, a fact that he first talked about in the Bobby Mackey's episode. Pearl had been five months pregnant at the time of her death. Jackson and Walling were both dental students at the time, and legend has it that they felt their medical knowledge was sufficient enough to perform an abortion. If that was the case, then obviously things went horribly wrong, and they eventually decapitated Pearl in an attempt to conceal the body's identity. What? <laughs> what were they trying to do? They were, oh, how do you go that wrong? No one's like fooling around with the tools down by like the, the pelvic area and then like slips. Oh shit, there was uh -oh. my scalpel. Oh, it chopped her head off. That's not how it works. I accidentally lopped it. A little too much <laughs> off the top on this one. <laughs> I'm going to be a little leery next time I go into the dentist and they put me under. My dad's a dentist. What? Yeah. Has he ever cut anybody's head off? Not that I know of. I mean, I could, I'm 99.9% .9 sure he's never cut anyone's head off in his time as a dentist. That's concerning that there's that tiny that, margin of error. That implies that maybe he may have before he was a dentist. I don't know about that time. Are you ever eating I've only known him as a dentist. Have you ever eaten dinner with him and he just kind of stares at the wall for a second and you wonder like... And there's oh. like a slight glint on the knife. Yeah. And then like, like Is he thinking about that time he accidentally cut someone's head off? In his academic life, Ryan attended Arcadia High School taking advanced film production as his main course, something which he regrets in his future, as he didn't like that much. He later graduated from Chapman University, having a bachelor's in fine arts in television and broadcast journalism. After college, he worked on sets doing lighting and grip work for two years. Unhappy with his job, he did film production at Sony Pictures and Viacom, and later did internship at BuzzFeed, where he made a bunch of weird videos which BuzzFeed usually make. It was this time when he started to make unsolved content, which later got recognition from BuzzFeed. Currently, Ryan has almost 360,000 followers on Twitter, and more than 752,000 followers on Instagram, where he shares his professional as well as personal life with his fans. <laughs> Ryan is the one who goes through every Supernatural episode three to four times after recording finishes, to find some really interesting evidences that they might have collected in those clips, and presents the best of them to Shane, who don't even take fraction of a second to reject them. Our audio recorder picks up a voice saying, I am not. Is Jesus here? I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> 
Earlier in the night, our static cam and EVP device placed in the basement picked up these footsteps when nobody was in the house. That's your proof? Yeah, there's nobody in the house. Okay. And it also sounds like they're in the basement and it also sounds like it's high, it also has the sound of high heels. Yeah. This is pretty big evidence in my opinion, but do I'm going to you... agree to disagree. I think it's uh, the sound of someone walking through a house. Okay. Black object thrown at the camera. I'm going to yeah. call it a bat. The where's the bat? Huh? The where's the bat? You see it kind of go from there to there. I'll call it a bat. Hard to tell. A bit inconclusive, as is most of the things. You know. I think this one is a truly on the fence. We don't know what that is. Yeah. So there you have it. I believe we just caught a disembodied cough uh, in which the cough belongs to one William Harn. Oh! Sounds like someone getting kicked in the nuts. <laughs> yes, someone getting oh! it's pretty Is this an officer that used to patrol these quarters? I'm gonna disagree with you on that one. Just the dynamics of the light, where it's coming from, you're further back. It's catching the pipe. Uh, it's not illuminating places behind it quite as much. When you're right up against it, you know, you're illuminating the thing right behind it. Reviewing the footage, we discovered on one of our static cams what appears to be a figure moving right outside Lavinia's cell. Is this the ghost of Lavinia Fisher? I believe this is the biggest piece of evidence we've ever caught on this show. It's no good. How do you think that's no good? I mean, it looks just like maybe a car passing somewhere or a, something. A car passing somewhere. Could also just be someone walking outside. If you will watch closely every Supernatural season, you will find that Ryan is somewhat more driven towards the paranormal in comparison to an average person and seems to be more sensitive towards it. Almost in every episode, you will find him going through at least one such experience that genuinely appeals to the believers. Unlike other ghost hunting shows where you'll find mostly made up content, on which they'll sprinkle a little bit of acting. That's the beauty of Unsolved. Their content is genuinely appealing to both believers and skeptics, and Ryan clearly is one of the most important pillar for this huge success of Unsolved. With that said, let's move towards another pillar, Shane Maddage. Shane is the second and current co-host of the show. He leads the non-believers or the skeptic side of the show, and followers of this side are often called the Shiniacs. A noticeable fact that you will hear in many episodes, is that he was a really really ugly face baby. This all started in a post-mortem episode of one of the true crime videos. This one is from Taylor Murphy, uh, where is our picture of Shane as a baby because we talked about how ugly of a baby you were. Yeah, let's just get these both out of the way. Yeah. Were you an ugly baby by the way? No. Oh, well, good for you. Yeah. I was. Wow. <laughs> that is an ugly baby. Your head looks like a really dried, disgusting raisin. I mean, I look like Tom Selleck from the from the eyebrows up. No, you don't. Yeah. You look like a shrunken Chris Christie. All right, it's fine. You look like if Chris Christie and John Goodman butted heads together and then fused into one little baby face. Oh, that's kind of fun. Yeah. Well, there you have it. I was monstrous. Yeah, that was that's an ugly ass baby. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> Some people thought I was being a little too harsh. Uh, Are you kidding me? No, that baby was hideous. Come was on. A, that was an ugly ass baby. Yeah, he looks like one of those uh, blob sea creatures. You know which one I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the one that looks like it's like a triangle. Shitfish or whatever. Like a shitfish? Called. Yeah, yeah you yeah. look like a shitfish. Yeah. Can, Can we just use that for the in betweeners? I'm not really a, burga a bugara or a I'm shaniac, a shitfish. I'm a shitfish. <laughs> in his academic life, Shane attended Schaumburg School and later graduated from Columbia College, Chicago. He then did many other jobs before reaching BuzzFeed, where he too made some other interesting videos before joining Unsolved. In 2016, he joined Ryan for doing Unsolved for a season, making his first appearance in the mysterious disappearance of the Sodder Children episode, which he liked quite a bit. So he continued with Unsolved for future seasons. Currently, Shane has a 427,000 follower base on Twitter, and a 770,000 follower base on Instagram, where he too shares some interesting clips from his personal and professional experiences. The of excitement is when the night will be. After all, there's only one more sneak of Christmas. 
people were signing things and whoa oh my god a change of heart <laughs> Just keep going, they just keep going. Look how long they are. <laughs> what? Ghosts aren't real. Wait, Fuck the music ghosts. They're a bunch Wait, of the music bullshit. Is done. Fuck ghosts because they don't exist. Oh, shit. Wait, really? There's a new post mortem. Swipe up to go watch it. Uh, Ryan's out of town right now, so I'm just. <laughs> I'm sitting in his chair, farting in it. You know, playing with his little, uh, oh, my toxic woman gel, my special research. Wow, I guess I've never really looked through the set here. Wait, what is this? Top secret. Is this Ryan's? Dear diary, I think Shane is right about the supernatural. Ghosts are big time baloney. I'm too afraid to admit I'm wrong. I'm going to go sob now. Sincerely, a little scared Ryan. Oh, and by the way, if you're liking this video, do consider subscribing to this channel. I put out videos like this every second week, and I'm working on more of these. Around 98.9% .9 viewers have not subscribed to this channel, which in turn really demotivates me for future videos. So do consider subscribing, as it is free, and you can also unsubscribe later on. And to those who have already subscribed, thanks again, it really really means a lot. With that in mind, let's move to the next section, where we will take a deeper look at the different formats of the show, namely Supernatural and True Crime. Let's start up with the supernatural. As clear from its name, it is that format of the show, where the ghoul boys hunt ghosts and demons by traveling to different haunted locations. But that's not how it was started. Supernatural started with a different method, one in which the boys sat down inside their studio and discussed about conspiracy theories, with no physical on-site investigations. But they continued experimenting with their content regularly, and eventually released a mega 45-minute episode back in late 2016, Named as the three horrifying cases of ghosts and demons, where they investigated three haunted locations physically for the first time, that too in a single episode, which once again increased their viewership like never before. And that's how the supernatural that we know today was born. They then started doing more of it, shortening the video length with one horror location per episode. However, they still do the original in-studio discussion episodes till today, but its number has been reduced to only one episode per season, mostly covering extraterrestrial or alien-related cases. In addition to this, they also perform one demon investigation per season, as Ryan seems somewhat more scared from demons. Well, if you don't know the difference between a ghost and a demon, we've got you covered. Take a look at this clip from the mega episode, where famous exorcist Father Thomas explains about these topics in detail to the boys, also blessing Ryan with some holy water, which you'll find him carrying in every single demon investigation episode. What is the difference between a ghost and a demon? A ghost would refer to a disembodied human soul. A demon is a preternatural angelic creature that rebelled against God. It's not human. No, it's not. Their life form is dying. They've been dying since the moment they rebelled. And so they are attracted to human beings for two reasons. One, because they are parasitic and they, and they feed off our life form. But secondly, their goal is to take as many of us to hell with them as possible. Because they already know they've lost. I'm not trying to evangelize oh, you. I, I, oh, no, no, no. I just got a shiver down no. my spine. <laughs> so can a ghost and a demon both possess or maybe influence the living? Yes. And I've had those cases. Where are these homes you're going into? One of them is nearby here, the Winchester Mystery House. Essentially, it's a haunted mansion. And then the next one is a haunted doll island in Mexico City. The last place is perhaps the scariest. It's a house infested with a demon. Do you have any advice for us going into some of these places where we may come into contact with not so nice spirits? Are we still on camera? Yeah. Okay. If these places you're going claim to have spiritual attachments, I would do nothing to invite them into any kind of conversation. I would do nothing to invite them to somehow show themselves or taunt them in any way. You don't want to create a tie with them. So treat it like a fine art museum. I would. Would it be possible for you to perhaps bless some water for something for me to carry? Yes, do you have something? It's, it's literally just a water bottle. That's fine, I can bless it. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, in your kindness, hear our prayers and pour down the blessing into this element so that the health obtained by calling upon your holy name may be made secure against all attack through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for sure. sitting down with us and thank sure. you for yeah, it was this helpful? Fascinating. This yeah, was, it was super helpful okay. and I feel a lot better about Good. what's about Good. to happen. Good. 
When you'll watch any episode of Supernatural which contains a physical investigation, you'll notice that majority of their comment section is filled with timestamps, where viewers saw or heard something unusual, and there are really plenty of them. Some of them had been answered by the boys in their post-mortem episode, but most of them remains undiscovered. So keep an eye on the comment section too, there you'll find more evidences than those presented in the show. And if you've decided to binge watch the series, I've made a priority list of the most interesting episodes, which you'll find somewhere on the screen right now, or you can also find its link in the description. With that said, let us now move towards the second in the oldest format of the show, True Crime. True Crime is an intensely interesting way to learn about unsolved crime cases, that too with the help of two of the funniest and most enthusiastic hosts anyone would have the good fortune to meet. As described by some reviewers, True Crime is a perfect blend of mystery and comedy, which in my opinion, is more than enough for any show in the world to be gripping as hell. A typical True Crime episode starts with Ryan explaining an unsolved crime case to Shane, which makes a clear picture of its background in the mind of the viewers. It then ascends to Ryan putting up various theories to prove a handful of suspects guilty, with Shane cutting in to provide his insights and responses. Ryan also uses evidences from previous police investigations, coupled up with some of the internet theories to convince Shane about a suspect, who usually tries to oppose it. The episode ends with both of them discussing which theory would have been the most likely. While the show itself is an amazing watch, its fan base is a cherry on top. If you are rather invested in an episode, you can always read the comments for some of the most riveting theories, and can even come back after a day or two for more of them. And this was the reason why Postmortem was started, which is a series in which the boys answers their fans' questions, along with reading some of their most fascinating theories. In a typical Postmortem episode, Ryan reads out the serious questions or theories, while Shane is assigned the task of reading the silliest of them. At the end of most of the Postmortem episodes, there exists a mini-series, which the fans love to watch. The most interesting of them is the Hot Dogger series. It was first coined by Ryan, but he slowly started to hate every bit of it. The reason being that the hot dog never had an end, and was written and performed by Shane himself, who never left any stone unturned to mock Ryan. In one peculiar episode of the hot dog, Shane even tried to build up a character using Ryan's voice, by combining many of his voiceovers to form a sentence. That's really insane if you think of, and is surely a lot of work. Picks up the nearest buckle. Please tell me there's a way out of here. There's a way out of here. The pluffle explodes. The pluffles all cool. Suddenly, from the deep, a bellowing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my what? What the? What? What is that? Is that Dr. Gundis? We still can't see the figure, but we hear it from the deep. Don't worry, I am Dr. Gundis. <laughs> it's you. No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. It doesn't sound anything like me. What are you talking about? Don't worry, I am Dr. Gundis. <laughs> Dr. Gundis? Yeah, it's you. Dr. You're in the hot dog now. Oh my god, you're a madman. Oh my god, he literally went through every one of the VO files that I've recorded for Unsolved. Cut up little pieces of it to, to form this. You are insane! You are a madman! I can't believe- You know how much- You have any idea how long that probably took to do? Don't worry, I am Dr. Goodis. Anyway, tune in next week for the season finale of The Hot Dogga starring Ryan Bergara. What the fuck? We got him! No, you didn't get me! This, this <laughs> proves how crazy- We got him! This just proves how crazy you are! Don't worry, I am Dr. Goodis. Oh my god, you- I love it. I would really love to see more of this beautiful piece of entertainment in the future, and hope they make more shows like this, not forgetting to mention the fact that it must be hosted by the two best hosts of the world, Shane Maddage and Ryan Bergara. With that said, let us move to the very last section of this short documentary, ending it with some discussions about the possible future of the show. In case you still don't know, the boys now have their own channel called The Watcher, where they make other interesting videos, and are committed to it as full-time creators. That channel also features Stephen Lim, a personality whom you might recognize from the famous BuzzFeed show Worth It. He, along with Shane and Ryan, formed The Watcher back in late 2019. This was the time when rumors started spreading that the Ghoul Boys have left BuzzFeed, and there will be no new seasons. The reason for this, as rumored, was that the boys wanted full rights over their content, which BuzzFeed, as a business firm, refused to give. 
This thing spread out like fire, resulting in BuzzFeed facing some major backlash from its own viewers, some even boycotting their products. But it was later confirmed that the boys still had freelance contracts with BuzzFeed, and there were more seasons to come, a reason why we saw two true crime seasons this year. But again, after these seasons, it is rumored that their freelance contract is ending somewhere around early 2021, and that this was indeed the last season of Unsolved. With these confusions in mind, let's see some of the possible situations that Unsolved might go through in coming years. The first, and the most likely situation, is that the Ghoul Boys might renew the freelance contract, with more seasons happening in near future. The boys too know how much we like watching Unsolved, and most of their watcher videos are more sort of chat show oriented, which will never be able to match up with the peculiar concept of Unsolved. So to keep up with their fans' expectations, it would be best to continue doing Unsolved for future seasons. Although they might reduce the number of seasons per year, as they might fall short of time managing two channels, but that's any time acceptable, and would still be better than witnessing a complete full stop on Unsolved. As I said before, the usual content on The Watcher is more like a chat show, a reason why it was not able to surpass even a fraction of Unsolved's viewership at the beginning. But in recent developments, we have witnessed a series of episodes closely resembling to that of Unsolved on The Watcher, such as the Too Many Spirits series, or the one in which they read the internet's most scary stories. Combine any of these series with a physical investigation, and you might get something close to Unsolved. That could be a possible hint that there might be something new, just like Unsolved on The Watcher, but this would sadly mean a full stop on original Unsolved, something that seems less likely to happen. But if the gap between BuzzFeed and the Ghoul Boys continue to extend, this might be one of the most reasonable outcomes. The least likely of these situations, is that the boys might leave BuzzFeed completely, and continue with their chat show content on The Watcher, trusting their fanbase to accept the new concept. And on the other hand, to revive Unsolved, BuzzFeed might put up new faces on it, something which seems highly unacceptable, but is still possible, as there are many videos being released on the BuzzFeed Unsolved network, which do not have any of the ghoul boys in it. And with these theories in mind, I would like to sum up this video by saying that every situation presented here, are just possible theories, and it might be possible that neither of them ever come true. I include these because after researching much about the show, I was able to see Unsolved only in these situations in the longer run. I am too a huge fan of Unsolved from the beginning, and I too don't want it to be ended. And that's why I said that the first situation is the most likely. By the way, can you think of more situations that Unsolved could hop into? If yes, then don't forget to comment it down below. Thanks for staying with me for this long. Do like and subscribe to this channel as I make these videos regularly. Till then, why not watch any one of these on the screen?